Growing up, I was afraid to smile outdoors for fear that my teeth would get sunburned. <laughs> Every summer I watched as my hair became lighter and my, my skin became darker, so I knew one of two things could happen, and I've never been a gambler. As I grew older, I began to evangelize my convictions until several members of my second grade classroom stopped smiling during recess. <laughs> our teacher intervened to tell us that we do not, in fact, have melanin in our teeth. My peers moved on, smiling resumed. Still, I ran around, closed mouthed and anxious, consciously attending to a belief I knew to be false. What we believe matters and how we live gives testament to our beliefs. The thing I love most about the Fellows Initiative is how seriously it takes an acted belief. It cultivates integrity in the Christian life by consistently challenging us with scripture, directing us to think critically about the implications of our beliefs, engaging us in internships and host homes as unsheltered situations for growth, and ensuring that we have the accountability of a close community to walk us through the process. Through the Prelos program, I was challenged to enact the beliefs I professed to maintain, but had yet to bear fruit in in my life, as well as to explore the postures and actions I continued as dead wood or artifacts of unfaith. The Fellows program made my faith responsive and alive, and if I had to take one thing away with me from the program to animate my current roles as teacher, athlete, and wife, it would be that, a self-conscious living faith. But beyond that, the Fellows Program transformed my understanding of truth, God's and our relationship to it, and this has proved most indispensable to me as an edu educator. My name is Sabrina. I live in Waco, Texas with my husband, David, who is also a fellow. I don't think I could have married a non-fellow. Um, <laughs> he's my best friend, uh, but also my, my role model, um, and I love him very much. Uh, during the day, I work at Live Oak Classical School, teaching medieval history, literature and composition, and anatomy and physiology. I guess on my best days, on my worst days, it kind of all smushes together and becomes something more like medieval anatomy. <laughs> Before and after school hours, I'm an ultramarathoner and member of the U.S. national team. Um, which kind of sounds tiring, but it's actually um, pretty restorative and restful and uh, kind of complements my work in the classroom. For my whole life, I wanted to be a professional athlete. I'm not in the right size range for football, so I went with running. <laughs> and it's been an incredible gift, a joyful activity that's instructive and discipline and one that I can share um, with my students now that I'm the cross-country coach. Uh, since the fellows year, I've been able to complete, compete all across the country. Uh, I did a six-day race across the Rocky Mountains, and uh, last May I competed in the Netherlands, um, and I, I really enjoy it. Um, a few years ago, I found this race in, in California, and it's called the Western States 100, and you basically run up the coast of California. It's 100 miles. Uh, but it's awesome because you get to run through the mountains and um, there's this one part where you cross a river and there's a rope and like you have to like pull it and run across and it basically sounded like a dream. And so I decided <laughs> this was going to be my race. And so for months I prepared for this and lived a fairly Spartan lifestyle. Um, <laughs> Every day was long run day, and I lifted, and I slept well, and I ate well. Um, but before I knew it, um, it had become my hope. It was the one thing I kept returning to, just the prospect of um, potentially doing well in this race. Um, so I flew out to California, and the day before the race, we had a pre-race meeting. It actually turned out that it was the summer of the wildfires in California, and the course had caught on fire. And so the race was canceled. And we're all standing there. It's people from all across the world, and we're all in this room together. And then there's just like this chorus of sobs. Like everyone is crying. Um, and because it was, it was our hope. 
Um, when I say my hope caught fire, it's not figurative. The ground was on fire. <laughs> And I was a Christian, and I knew that this wasn't the right response that I should be having, and I wanted to commit my running to God, but in reality, it's hard to give God the glory when you want it for yourself. Martin Luther calls sin in curvitas in se, man as turned in on himself, um, and that was a pretty good description of who I was when I entered the fellows program. Sometimes I think that Choosing running as a vocation um, is, is kind of accepted too easily in Christian circles because of chariots of fire. <laughs> so it's great because Eric Little and I have the same last name, um, and he has this famous line, when I run, I feel God's pleasure. Um, and people love to preach on that. But the problem is with me, when I run, I feel other things too, like my own pleasure, endorphins, and the wind blowing through my hair, <laughs> which sometimes feels like divine sanction, but it's not. So I've had to realize that what I might feel might not be the best barometer for athletics, and I'm learning to rely on the people around me for insight. Running is achievement-based, and being a countercultural athlete is difficult on my best days. If I don't recommit my works before God every morning and remember that I'm trying to outdo, not undo my opponents, I won't be able to honor God with my efforts, and that's what I really want to do. These days, the bulk of my attention and energy lie in my classroom. I often think of the teachers I had during the Fellows Program not always because of what they taught me, but because of how. Um, they were present, they were hospitable, and they didn't fear questions. I'm thankful to work in a Christian classical school because I have more flexibility in structuring the curriculum, which for me means an elevated stewardship of language because of a deeply felt conviction that Christ is the incarnate word and that language is living and active, and a greater integration of theological concepts and historical study. In my classroom, we read great books and track living ideas. Coming away from the Fellows Program, I feel better equipped to teach in this way because of the recognition that truth inheres in God and that I don't have to fear questions if I teach faithfully, prayerfully, and with integrity. As Abraham Kuyper wrote in Sphere Sovereignty, there is not a square inch in the whole domain of our human existence over which Christ, who is sovereign over all, does not cry, mine. Dr. Garber also directed me to Westy Newbegin's proper confidence, and he said, the question of truth is at stake. If it's true, it is universally true, just as a statement about the DNA molecule is true. If it's true at all, it's true for everyone. So I can laud the advancements of pagan and faithful cultures alike, recognizing God's role in all that is good and beautiful. To say that the Fellows Program was an important vehicle for my renewal and sanctification in Christ is an understatement. I left with surety in God's nearness and a missional outlook on the world. What we believe matters, and how we live gives testament to our beliefs. Through my actions, I want the world to know where my hope lies and who it is I serve.